go. Uh, hello, YouTubers. Okay, this is going to be an update on the 12 inch rocket stove project. Um, last time you seen the coil uncovered, uh, we went ahead and cobbed that in. And after we got it cobbed, I just let my finger in pretty good. Uh, still pretty wet. You can get a good shot of that. Uh, got that cobbed in and uh, went ahead and laid some tile on top. It was just some scrap tile that we had laying around. Sorry, excuse me. But yeah, just put some tile around the back. Go ahead and back out, will you? You can see that we put a couple more uh, curly cues on the front as a decoration. Um, just smoothed it in. Uh, as we come out in layers, we're putting less sand in it so it will get uh, a little bit smoother. Um, one of the guys asked me about cob mixes. I want to say something about cob mixes. There is no cob mix that anybody can prescribe for you. What it is is that if you're, especially if you're digging your clay up locally, I can't tell you how much clay, how much content, and what it's got in it. And so whenever you're doing a cob mix, uh, this Hawthorne clay, I happen to know that it works at a good two to one ratio, but uh, that'd be different for any clay you might dig up in any one spot, uh, depending on what its content might be. So one of the best things to do is, is to make you a cob brick, set it out in the sun, and, uh, and bake it and make two or three different kinds of mixes so you can come back and then test those bricks for yourself to see which one of them uh, hold together. So you'll have to do a little bit of your own experiment on being able to find the right cob mix. Now uh, on to the stove, uh, we're going to use water as a thermal mass. This was a traditional rocket stove and through this there is a six inch uh, pipe that used to be feeding this. What we've done is we're going to go out through the ceiling and we've reduced that 6 inch down to a 2 inch pipe and we're using that 6 inch to pull fresh air into this stove here. So we'll have two ways for air to approach. We'll have it here and then there'll be the uh, uh, internal there uh, which you guys have already seen a shot of uh, on doing that. Now let me explain to you, this is going to be a thermal siphon. So what's going to happen here is, is this barrel here is going to get filled to this level here. So we're going to have this much head pressure on top of this and this will go over to the coil in here and the uh, coil will come up and be bent up here. So whatever the level the water gets it will come up in the coil here as well. So then it will have a piece of copper going up here and going over to that tank so as the water boils here and gives us pressure it will push the rise and come over and drop into this tank. When it fills up this tank, when this tank gets to this level, it will fill over, fill this tank, and this one will fill back. So it should do a thermal siphon loop with two tanks. So we've got uh, 110 gallons of water, but we're not using maybe the top three or four inches, so we're counting on about 100 gallons of water here. Uh, so we're going to see how this thermal siphon works. One option that we do have is, is that if we don't get the heat that we want and if our exit temperature here isn't what we expect it to be, what we'll do is, is we might take this one and go around the flue one more time. Uh, I'd like to keep this where it's a, you know, uh, something about these, about these flue exit temperatures and that is, is that you know, you can get them down, if you get, to, get them down where you got a rip-roaring fire in there and you're only like at 100 degrees, that means when that fire is on its way out that you're subject to backdraft, right? Because of the lack of heat. So, uh, I like to keep this exhaust, if you get it down to 95 degrees or 100 degrees when it's rip-roaring again, when it's well on its way out and, it's not, and, that, and that flue's not holding that 95 degrees, it's a good chance of backdrafting. So I'm going to try to keep this flue here, exit temperature, 200 degrees. If it's a little over 200, I may wrap it around this stack on the way out. If it's not quite, you know, if, if it's a little over, I'll, I'll just uh, run it over on in. And so anyway, guys, this is the new update. I want you guys to get a look at it through the stages. Thanks for watching.